Thank you for joining this install video for the Motive Motorsport Reflex Port Controller on C7 Corvette. Let's start by lifting the vehicle and supporting it properly. Also disconnect the battery at this time. Next remove the passenger side front wheel. Once the wheel's off and out of the way, we'll remove the inner fender well. Now we'll remove the grill inset from the side of the fender and disconnect the back of the fender from the vehicle so we can access the ECU. This will give you enough space to reach in there and disconnect the ECU connectors. We're ready to get started here with our harness install and then we're going to start with the vehicle specific harness, uh, the reflex install harness uh, for LTX. And we're going to go ahead and open that up, take it out, and on a, on a Corvette we're going to start at the top of the vehicle um, and we're going to drop some of the harness down through. Okay, at this point we got the uh, harness opened up here. JT's holding the two pieces that will actually make it down to the bottom of the vehicle. We're gonna run those down into the fender well. So the location we're gonna go down at here is kind of just in front of the, it's right in front of the, on a, Z, on a Corvette, it's right beside the, uh, the oil dipstick tube there. There's a small gap there that lets you go down through the fender well dale into the base and those two connectors will fit. It is a snug fit. You have to tweak them and get them twisted the right way, but you can get them down that way. So he's working on the first one now, which is the smaller items. Okay, then we'll put the next connector to, which is the, the connection to the main harness. And again, same spot there. You can see where we're at, kind of by the fuse box and by the uh, radiator fill cap and the, the place where you check oil at. It's, it's a snug spot for that connector, but once you get it down through there, it's, it's just fine. Okay, so once you've got that down in place there, we'll kind of go to the, we'll go to the down underside of the car, get our system connected to the E92. And you can see we have our um, controller, which we've set up in this little cavity that exists right above the fender well there. And it is basically held in with, it has basically a, a, a two-sided tape and a kind of a, a tie there to hold it in place. You notice we do have a USB cable connected. That just runs up the fender and it goes into the passenger compartment of the vehicle. Um, and like I said, that's a, we need that to talk to the controller box here. Next, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put our injector harness in. So generally the easiest way to do that is we'll first plug it into the uh, ECU there, plug it into the uh, other controller and we'll snap that in place. Um, that's the other way. Oh, you got it. Perfect. With that in place, now we have the rest of the wires can hang there. And what we're gonna do is hang, connect our, yep, exactly our vehicle harness to our main harness. That connection made. Now we're gonna move on to our injectors, which are down below. Because just the opposite of how we did the, uh, the vehicle harness, which we handed down, mainly because of the relay box and stuff that was up there, it wasn't room to fit. Now we're gonna go ahead with the injectors and we're gonna send them up through that spot there. You can kind of show us where we're gonna go at. And we're gonna go right up there, just in front of that oil tank, there's a cavity there we can run it up through. So we have the E92 connector. This is the X1 connector, which is the top connector off the ECU. And it has a blue insert inside of it, which we've already removed. Now we're gonna go ahead and pull pin number 40, which is our white wire. Um, it's sitting right down in there. And JT is gonna go ahead and remove that pin 40. So basically there's a small release right into the connector there. So when it gets that pin pulled, it comes straight out like that. We have this connector here. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put that pin into our reflex connector, which JT's gonna grab there. Sorry, it's this small connector here. It's going to have a number on it and you're gonna put the white wire into pin number one on this connector. And if you look on the back side of the connector, it'll be noted. And then he's gonna put the, you see the, I don't know if you can see the direction he's putting that in. I'm trying to hoping it focus it for there. And you can drop that pin that way in. It goes in all the way and it will just stop. You see it, it went through there? That's it. So once we have that in place, we're ready to put the other wire from our controller into the ECU pin. So he's gone ahead and grabbed that. You know, run it through the inside of the fender here so we can make sure we put the, can get the connector to go back in. Now at this point he's going to take, um, which color wire is that GT? It's the green one. So the green one for pin 40 back into the ECU. So 
you just kind of want to pay attention to the way you took these pins out so when you put them back in you can go the same way so on this one the locking tab is going to go down yep locking tab down towards the Okay, that one's in. All right, good deal. So then the next thing we're gonna do is pull out pin 39, which is the blue wire right alongside of it. So this pin 39 is the pin basically between the white wire, pin 40, and the flex fuel sensor connection, which is pin 38. Maybe sense the lock them for right now. So they, there's a little lock on the side there. You see the clip he just pushed in there, and that's for uh, locking the connector in place. And then he's going to put the yellow wire into pin 39, where the blue wire came out of. I heard it click. Sounded good. All right. Okay, so that's about all we have to do with the X1 connector. Next, we'll have to move down to the X2 connector and repeat this process for uh, pin 39 in the X2 connector, which on the ECU, it would be the second connector down, which is a black colored. It has a black colored insert. So, JC, why don't you want to put that blue insert back in the end there so you can see how that's done? It just simply lines up. It can only go in one way. Bingo. All right, we're here with our X2 connector now off the ECU. As you can see we brought it out through the side vent on the side of the fender here. Uh, basically these connections on a Corvette or a Camaro are the same connection. Uh, the one thing I will say is that it's a lot more difficult on a Corvette, unfortunately. So first thing JT is gonna do there is pull off the cap on the top of the, uh, the wiring harness. You see it releases in the back there. Make sure I get some light on it there. And then it just basically pulls forward and comes off. That will open up our wires. Next thing it's do is gonna slip the strain, cut the stain strain relief, which is basically nothing more than just a zip tie there. Take that out of the way. And then finally, we'll go ahead and we'll take the tape that holds the loom together there on the top. Let's put a little light in there for you. Okay. Next step then is to go ahead and remove the uh, pin containment system in the connector here. Okay, now with that out of the way, we can see the connector. We're gonna find the lead we need. It's pin 39 for the cam sensor, and the cam sensor lead is green with a black stripe on it. So you look for green with a black stripe in pin 39. So you dig that up. Sometimes it's helpful to shake the wire from the back. It will let you see which pin you're actually working on there or trying to get out. There's a small clip that you release with a small straight screwdriver or a release tool of some sort you can get down in there. So you kind of get yourself started in there and give it a pull at the same time. Do you want me to help trying to pull you there? Oh, you got it. Okay, once that leads out, we grab our connections from our our, our extra connector that's included with the kit. And this one, we already have the two wires in there for the, the CAN bus. And now we're gonna grab the CAM sensor, which is gonna go into lead number three. So just removing the release there for a second. We'll put that into the connector, into pin three.
Okay, so with that done, you can see we have our connector here that has our three leads connected into it. It's a CAN wire, CAN wire, two CAN wires, and one CAM wire. We'll throw that to the side now. Now the purple wire that we have from the reflex harness, we'll put into pin 39. Okay, once that pin's in there, we make sure it's in all the way, looks good, and then we'll snap our containment clip back into the connector on the bottom side. And you want to be gentle here, these things will they'll go together, but it's got to line everything up once you get it right, and then it should just go in with a simple snap. Perfect. Our pin's in there, we'll run that up the right way. Now with that in place, we'll go ahead and put a little bit of a tape around the, the wire bundle there. We'll zip tie it back down the way it was, and we'll snap the clip back on. Okay, finally we're gonna connect the two connectors we have together. There's one on the reflex connector and the connector that we added all of our jumper pins into. So at this point, you just line up the connector the proper way, between two sides, clip them together, and push your lock in to make sure that it's completely secure and gonna stay there. All right, at this point, we want to plug all the ECU back in underneath there, and we'll start putting it, we'll fit, put the fender back together, and we'll also get into wiring the top part of our uh, system into our injectors. Okay, we're mostly wrapped up underneath the vehicle now. We're just going to go ahead and get the top side put together here. Um, the first thing that JT is going to grab there is the injection harness, the injector harness. Uh, that's going to run over the... Uh, to the top of the vehicle there. Um, we don't have a specific spot for them yet. Our plates are off this car. We're in a, mass, in a process of making some updates here as we go. So we'll get those on here shortly. As soon as we get the plates on, then we'll be able to plug the injectors in. But for now, we're just gonna kinda get everything in place. Uh, he's gonna feed the harnesses up through the front there. So the harnesses are kinda drop in that way. Looks pretty clean. And then they run down either side of the engine there. Similar by the coil packs for now. We'll just kinda lay them in there for right now. Okay, now that we have all the wiring harness in place for the injectors, we're going to go ahead and focus on these other connections we have to make up top. So first off is our little relay box. It just sits right down in there. It's a nice spot for it to rest on a Corvette. And then we're going to go ahead and connect the power. On the back of the battery box there, there's a post, a uh, main power post, and the red wire will connect directly to that. As you can see there, we flipped it open and have, try to get in there and see if I can focus on that. There we go. And uh, we'll go ahead and knock that nut off quickly. Uh, by the way, yeah, I forgot to say earlier that make sure the battery's disconnected before you attempt this. So in the back there, we're gonna wanna take that battery disconnection. We can go ahead and drop our power wire right on there. And you can see JT posted it out towards the back. Let me see if I can't get in a little tighter on that. Yep, you can see how it's got it there. He'll put the nut back on it and that'll finish our power connection to the box. So that is the main power to it. It does get switching power from a different location, so it's not, on, even though there's full power there, uh, the power's not on all the time. It only turns on when the key's on and when the vehicle's running. Okay, next up we have two ground wires that have to be connected. As we look down in here, it's basically between the alternator and the air box there, we see a ground post standing down there. We're gonna go ahead and run these wires down to that ground post and make them connections. So, yep, that's the two wires there. We'll run them again right up the side here. Make sure you're not in the hood latch. You wanna be down underneath that hood release there. Okay, for these grounds on this particular stud, we have enough stud length on there. Hopefully it'll focus on there for us. Um, let's say it will not, but the length is long enough that we're gonna be able to just add this, that we add the ground on top. So in your kit, you'll find another nut that's in there, and that nut is used to, you put your two grounds on there, and uh, once those two grounds uh, are on there, then you just put the nut on top of it. Okay, the last connection we gotta make is simply this MAF harness, um, and there's a jumper as you see right here. On the side of that jumper, there is another connector. It's right there, it's a small one. And what that is is the IAT breakout. So if you're on an LT4, you can just leave that connected just the way it is right now. And if you're going to be running us an LT1, 
then you can use that breakout to pull the temperature from where it normally grabs at the math meter. Um, like a Magnuson kit will normally include a jumper like this to break out the IAT. Uh, this one, you won't have to run two jumpers that way. We could just run this single jumper, disconnect it there, and then we have another jumper for the specifically for connecting that to the LT1 engines, which is, which is available as well. So let's go ahead and we'll kind of route this in a way that comes up from the back there. Again, we're gonna run right up the side with it. This is a little bit on the long side for this car specifically, and you'll, you'll probably have some excess that we'll have to uh, coil up somewhere and save. But the goal was to make sure it was capable to work on both the Corvette and the Camaro applications. So uh, with the singular harness there, that lets us put it up there in place. So it's basically nothing more than disconnecting the math meter right there. Getting that off the, over the, out of the way. And then the connector goes directly onto the math meter like that, lock to lock. And on the other side there, a little further away for you there, we can go ahead and just make the connection right there. And that basically ties it up for us. Um, and that connection there you made there, we get the raw math signal, which is what's needed for this controller. Uh, we also get a power switch to know when the key has been turned on and things are running. And uh, basically that completes the installation here other than just plugging in our injectors. So next thing to do is go ahead and connect the wiring harnesses. The wiring harness should come from the passenger side, loop around the front of the engine, and then plug each connector in. So the crossover for the V should be at the front of the LT engine. That way, if you have the feed coming from the passenger side and the longest wire in the harness ends up to be number seven over there on the far side, that means you have the connectors put on the correct direction for the sequential injection because um, it's timed that way to operate properly. Okay, now we're over on the driver's side of the vehicle. You can see where the wiring harness came across the front right here. We looped across the front and then we're onto this side of the vehicle. Michael's gonna go ahead and connect these injectors up for us. And as long as the longest injector lead you had ends up to be cylinder number seven back there, you'll get the connections right. The crossover has to be on the front and has to come from the passenger side. That way all the, the, the sequential sequence of the injectors will be firing properly. So with that it, we're pretty well wrapped up here. Time to get that blower back on. The old note, we do have our quick look at our new billet covers there for the Magnuson or any engine or supercharger basically using port. With these valve covers, you'll be able to run the LP plates or R plates on any of the engine applications and the coils are moved down out of the way in the right location and there's plenty of clearance for the fuel injector down in there. <laughs>